Hi, Jimmy. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. I'm really looking forward to this. And yeah, it was my birthday a few days ago, so I'm still celebrating. I'm deciding to celebrate for the month. <laughs> yeah, good for you. So how has your past year been going and what are your wishes for this coming year? Oh, the, the years, like for everyone, has been a bit up and down and crazy. But um, uh, my wishes for this year is, uh, I, I don't know, a bit of normality. I don't know what that looks like anymore. But uh, but my main wish for this year is for everyone to be safe, safe and healthy, you know, and uh, and happy, happiness, you know. I think a lot of people's mental health has been sort of tested over the last few times, over the last few few months, should I say. Um, and so in some ways, you know, Kate and Koji coming out uh, during a pandemic is, I don't know, I want to say it's a lifesaver, but it was a welcomed uh, treat for people. Uh, and uh, I think I definitely watched the most comedy I've watched in a year over the last 12 months, definitely. You know, you want something a bit more lighthearted than the dramas. And, uh, and so Kate and Koji being a hit in the UK and now being in the US, I'm really excited uh, about it. I'm proud of the show. So for those that don't know, tell them a little about Kate and Koji and a little about Koji. Okay, so Kate and Koji is a UK sitcom now on BritBox. So, you know, everybody in America can watch it. It's basically about uh, Kate, a working class cafe owner in a seaside town, and Koji, who's an African asylum seeker. Um, Koji sits in the cafe, he's got his routine, just doing his crossword, word, waiting for his lawyer to update him on his case, his asylum case. And then Kate has got a cafe, but it's not that busy. So the one person that always turns up is Koji, but he only buys one cup of tea. And so she asks him, why does that happen? And they get in an argument. And then we have the birth of Kate and Koji. And for me, I say this a lot, it's a modern day classic. It's a bit like the odd couple. Will they get together as friends? Not necessarily as a love couple. Uh, it, it, it has elements for me of the Frasers, Cheers, or the British shows like Only Fools and Horses, Open All Hours, or Desmond's, and uh, and some of like the Chuck Law shows, you know, the, those great shows. And so, I think America's going to enjoy it. I think they're going to love it. And uh, and I think it's a really interesting way to tell the story about uh, immigration, asylum seekers, really, uh, through comedy, uh, without laughing at the character. Actually, it's it's not about that it's, it's about getting the importance of the story out and making the audience fall in love with these two fantastic icon characters that you know you could be watching for years hopefully <laughs> yeah yeah and as you were saying it's a sitcom really unlike anything we've ever seen before it addresses topics that we don't see addressed in any shows let alone sitcoms um so what sort of conversations did you have with the writers andy hamilton and guy jenkin about the character um, for me, uh, like I, uh, I said before, I wanted to make sure that he, uh, Koji wasn't the butt of the jokes. Um, uh, I, they had already done a lot of fantastic research. So we talked, we collaborated together to, to make sure that even within the comedy moments of the show, everything's based off of truth, right? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's this is a serious situation and so we went to meet a young man that was actually going through something that uh, Koji's going through right now he was a guy from from uh, somewhere in South America and so it's really great to get that that insight and and so when we were able to do do the scenes and do the, each episode we were we could like find and know where the comedy bits are but also we were very aware of of the stress and anxiety like Koji would be going through in terms of, you know, this is it. This is if it doesn't go his way, he's got to go back home, and we know what that means. And so, with Andy and Guy, Guy, these are right. The the two writers that are award winning writers. They did the show Outnumbered, Drop Dead Donkey. I work with them on a Channel Four show called Ballot Monkeys. They're very skilled. They're very funny, and so. A lot of the work is there. And so it's when you've got good writing, it's easy to do good work. 
Right. And as you were saying, the show is a big hit in the UK. It's about to come here. So what sort of reactions have you received to this show and to Koji? Uh, you know, so far, it's been so positive. I think, uh, obviously, a lot of people uh, had seen, in terms of America, if you're an American, you're hearing about it, like, what we got is the message I got is that when can I see it? When can I see it? So this time last year, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if you're ever going to see it. But the joy with the industry changing so much with Esports, with Britbox, now America can see it. And, you know, people have loved it. People have said that they've tried to just watch one episode and they're binging, you know. Obviously, we're all at home, so it helps. But I think the show goes so fast in a, in a, it's so fluid that you do one and it feels like you've only been watching it for 10 minutes, you know? Um, and so people have been very positive about it. I think a lot of uh, eyebrows are raised because it was the biggest hit IT have had in like the last eight or nine years. So there's an excitement about that. And, and also I think to have like a working class female as a lead and then a, you know, a, a black, you know, an African, Doctor, like just, just, just visually, just having those two leads, I think that's that's still rare, and, and which is crazy that I'm saying that right now. That's still really rare, and 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 this is not a love story or anything, but having these characters and representing their lives through their lenses, I think that is exciting. That's part of the reason why I did the job, and uh, and um, and it's interesting because I know Gina Yashere, and obviously you have. Bob Hart's Abby Shola, which is on uh, CBS, which is a different kind of show, but but that is a love story. Or will they get together? Will they not? And so it's quite nice that you've got something like that and uh, Gina behind it, who's a very good friend of mine. And then and then you've got something like Kate and Koji, and it's telling a different story. It's like, will they be friends or will they fall out? And I and I just think, again, it's showing you that there needs to be so many more diverse stories, you know. If, if this was just another love story, everyone would have been comparing the shows. And it's just like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like that. This is a story about people and about community. And, and the show has heart. And, uh, and yeah, I hope America enjoys it. Yes. Yeah. So as a storyteller, what was it like collaborating with Brenda Blethyn? Brenda, the Brenda, the Queen Blethyn. Uh, it was fantastic. I was a big fan anyway. Uh, I, I remember when I was young watching uh, Secrets and Lies yes. uh, and she's just she's such a joy to work with she's so giving she's so generous she's so good uh, you watch her do her work during the rehearsals she's got things planned out she can change on a sixpence and uh, she's just yeah I, I feel like we, we we became very good friends straight away. It was easy. We didn't know each other, but we know some of the same people. But that chemistry, you can try and work at it, but Andy and Guy didn't know. But as soon as we get, got together, we were like that. We were like that. The chemistry was there. And I think chemistry is an important and uh, ingredient to comedy. <laughs> it's the important ingredient. And you can't actually find that out until you put the people together. If we in the UK we don't do sort of like the rare that we do the pilot and then we change things in America I think the version of Kate and Koji that we've done the pilot uh, does Jimmy and Brenda have any chemistry if not <laughs> let's get rid of Jimmy or you know let's change it let's get somebody else in but I love the fact that we hear it off and and I learned a lot from her and uh, and we were playful she's 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 very comfortable with just you know, being in the moment, seeing what you're going to do and and very open to my ideas as I am to hers. You've had some very playful scene partners over the years with um, Tom Hollinger, Sir Ian McKellen, Naomi Harris, Idris Elba, Brenda, of course. So who have made an impact on your career and who've changed you as an actor that you'd love to work with again? Gosh, they they all have. They all have. Um, but you're right. I. I mean, working with Idris has been amazing because, you know, I've been a, an actor coming from the same area as him and, you know, seeing this, 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 this guy that looks like me be successful, come from my area and successful globally is amazing. And then to get to work with him, 
was just a joy and a dream come true. Um, and to see how playful he is, you know, in terms of comedy, he is very funny, even though he does a lot of the action and stuff like that. But on set, he leads with, let's just, let's just riff and let's just play. Um, and another person that I've learned a lot from was working with Dustin Hoffman on SEO Trot. Oh. You know, he, he again was very playful. He would just, you know, tell me to, don't worry about Richard Curtis's script. Let's just, let's just play. And Richard Curtis is just standing there. And I'm like, sorry, Richard, but Dustin's told me I can play, so I'm going to play. Um, but no, all those people, like Ian McKellen is fantastic. Tom Hollander, Olivia Coleman. Um, I'm very, I'm very proud of my career, but I, I'm an actor that's also a fan. I love the I love the work, uh, you know, and I love all these actors. So to to work with them on the same, on par with them, that's great. It's not that I'm looking in going, oh, I met them as I was passing by a theatre. Like, there are times when I worked with Ian McKellen, I had to be like, Jimmy, you need to stop being a fan because you might lose the job. Because <laughs> I'm watching him going, oh, that's, that's, that's Gandalf. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's Richard II. No. No, 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 that's, that's Magneto. I was just like, oh my God, this, this is the guy. Um, but I got out of that quite quickly. And, um, <laughs> and you learn different things from different people, you know, by acting with them and watching them. I've learned so much. I can't really say what one specific thing is, but mm -hmm. um, each actor makes you raise your game. And so you never forget. I've, I, I feel like each job I shed a skin and, and I get better and better. And, uh, and you can only do that by doing the work, by working with amazing people like you've just listed. Mm -hmm. So on top of being an award-winning actor, tell people about your work as co-founder of Triforce Creative Network. Yes, uh, basically I co-founded Triforce Creative Network uh, over about 16, 17 years ago with my business partner, Fraser Ayers. We started off being an organization that was at the forefront of diversity and inclusion before it became a buzzword. So we've always seen the issues within the industry. And we decided to try and do something about it our way, which was about providing uh, initiatives for actors to be seen by cast and directors and agents, no matter your background or your race or your, your, your sexuality uh, or your class. And then we, uh, that was called Monologue Slam. And then we, did another similar event called Writer Slam, which was about putting writers in front of commissioners and gatekeepers. And then we said to ourselves as a company, it's really important. You can't just do these events or do these schemes and not have a tangible outcome. So over the years, we've had actors get jobs in films, TV, theater, get signed by agents, managers, go to America. And then with the writers, we've had people that have got some of their script ideas picked up by networks or they've got representation. So the next step, we did a short film festival we do at BAFTA called the Trifle Short Film Festival. So you've got those three massive initiatives uh, as well as Dandy, which is about diversity and inclusion behind the camera, you know, because a lot of those initial initiatives were focused on the writers and the actors, but actually the biggest uh, issue actually is about behind the camera. So. We addressed that with a recruitment uh, initiative called Dandy. And then the next step was like, well, look, we're doing all this stuff as well as being actors. And, and at the, we just said, we have to create a production company and then make diverse and inclusive content for the mainstream audiences. For some reason, when you, when you say those words, people think that you have to marginalize it, put it to the side. I'm like, no, make it mainstream for everybody because everybody wants it and everybody will enjoy it and work it. You know, diversity and inclusion doesn't mean less or not good enough or less money. Uh, and so we've done that. We've created a show called Short Sorry I Didn't Know, which is a panel show, the first of its kind about black history. Uh, we're working on some dramas and some comedies with other uh, network channels. And what's great is that we have been able to honor our ethos that we started from the beginning, that we have complete diversity and in inclusion behind the camera and in front of the camera. And, uh, and we always share that in, in a really proud way because it's not that difficult. It really isn't. If you include everybody, you don't need to exclude anyone. 
Yeah. And I'm running out of time. So I'm just curious, what are some of the comedies that you've been watching this past year? Uh, Call My Agent. I absolutely love that show. I, that that got me through lockdown. Um, what else? Uh, I've been watching Coming to America too. Yes. <laughs> that's been great. Uh, I've been watching a bit of Fraser, Fraser again, actually. That's been cheering me up. I've been watching some Fresh Prince. Uh, and uh, I've been watching a bit of stand-up. Uh, uh, Tiffany Haddish as well. Mm, yes. Great choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so last I read was that you were going to be filming Kate and Koji season two. What's happening with that? So COVID just keeps wanting to get in the way for some reason. <laughs> so <laughs> the good thing is we've got a season two. Uh, we're probably going to start filming that later this year, if not the beginning of next year. So hopefully it should be out this time next year. But the fact that we've got a season two is great. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, I've got some juicy uh, other projects happening I can't talk about right now. But <laughs> watch, watch this space. Uh, but, um, and you know, Ted Lasso got picked up again and Qu Quibi obviously is not going anymore, but I think it's gonna be on Roku. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just really great that there's so much different work out there, even on BritBox. You can see me in Kate and Koji, but you can also see me in Holby City playing a, a surgeon, you know, and uh, or Death in Paradise, or or I, there's so much there, and uh, and I'm just enjoying right now that I've been very lucky to do something like Most Dangerous Game, but then do something like Kate and Koji, or in the long run on Stars, and and because back in the day you would do hit shows in the UK, but you guys in the US wouldn't get to see it. So it's really nice that over the last sort of six to eight months, you've got in the long run, Kate and Koji, you know, that's going to be shown on American TV. Yes, well, thank you so, so much for your time thank and for you. your art and your contributions, Jimmy. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having Have me. Have a wonderful day. Happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. <laughs> thank care. you, you too. Thank you.